Up next is none other than our keynote speaker. Jana Amin is indescribably brilliant. So I will keep my intro really short so she can get started. And as a youth activist, she's been driving powerful global action for girls empowerment, refugee rights, and changing the narrative around Muslim women, just to name a few. So a big shout out to Jana, and we're so happy to have you. Hi everyone, it's so good to be here. Thank you so much all for coming. I'm incredibly excited for this. Um, I think it's so important to get young women together because more than ever, we need young women in decision-making and space-making spaces. And I think, you know, just what we're doing here today at this summit, um, empowering each other and making sure that we're amplifying the voices of those not often invited to the table is so important and is the key to building those spaces and making sure that we're all sitting right at the table. So super awesome to be here. Um, as Alinka kind of mentioned, I'm a 17 year old Egyptian American activist for girls education, gender parity and changing the narrative around Muslim women. And I'll kind of begin all the way back in the beginning with how my own activism journey started in the hopes that it will give you all some tools and lessons and takeaways of how you can apply activism and become advocates for the communities you care about. And so I grew up in Egypt and I often tell people I grew up surrounded by a lot of women. And those women are, you know, the ones who I think really instills in me many of the values that I carry with me today. So this deep love of learning, um, an intense desire to help the communities around me, and a sense of global citizenship that I think is especially important within the COVID-19 pandemic and the effects it's had on all of us. And so growing up, you know, I don't think I was always necessarily aware of the many privileges that I had, and especially the privilege of education. I was lucky enough to go to a number of incredible schools um, that offered me, you know, these amazing mentors, these amazing teachers, all of whom uplifted and supported me along the way. And, you know, without them, I wouldn't be here today sitting in front of you, as many of you probably wouldn't be here today without your teachers and the gift of an education. I think the first time that I really realized that an education um, was so particularly transformative and important was when I met the daughter of a hairdresser here in, in, in Egypt and she was 17 years old at the time and I was seven so she was 10 years older than I was and yet she hadn't had the opportunity to go to school so she didn't know how to learn she didn't know how to read she didn't know how to write while I had been kind of given that opportunity um, my entire childhood and just seeing that disparity and realizing that she was never going to walk into a classroom feeling the same way I did, which was invincible, excited to raise my hand and answer the question, excited to go to the front of the classroom and kind of explain things to my classmates, right? And so I think that power and, and that feeling of being invincible is one that every woman around the world um, should have and, and truly honestly deserves, not only because they will then use that education to benefit their community, but also because by benefiting their community, they are thus transforming our collective society. And I think that's why when we talk about girls' education, um, it's, it's not just about how girls' education is going to help that one girl, but how it will then help transform an entire community. And so I think the next time that girls' education really came to my foresight um, was much more recently after I had moved to the US and had you know, somewhat of a culture shock in that in Egypt, I had grown up surrounded by so many women who in my mind were my role models. They were driven, they were impassioned, they were empowered. Some were Muslim, some weren't. Um, but there were all these you know, truly forceful um, figures in my life. And when I moved to the US and suddenly realized that some of my friends and teachers saw Muslim women or women from the Middle East as being victims of oppression, submissive servants, or even terrorists, I was at first confused. I didn't understand where this narrative came from. And I felt that I was single-handedly fighting it by telling my story. I think now I realize that that was, you know, my version of activism at the time, just storytelling, just telling people of, you know, the Muslim women I knew, my own story as a Muslim woman and the values that I held and that I knew so many other Muslim women around the world held. And I think just from telling these stories, I realized that you know, I was slowly beginning to change the narrative or at least add in a more nuanced narrative to some of my friends and, and teachers in the classroom. And I think from there came the realization that, you know, that that wasn't enough. Telling my story wasn't enough. Telling the story of the few Muslim women I knew wasn't enough either, because at the end of the day, I was yet again offering a singular perspective. 
what needed to happen was that young Muslim American women, young Muslim women more generally needed to be connected to other communities so that they could tell their stories and use their voices to advocate for the issues they cared about. Um, because my story was just one in so many you know, other stories. And so that's when I founded this initiative called Bentuta. Check it out on Instagram. It features young Muslim American women sharing their stories and advocating for the issues they care about. Um, it's awesome because, you know, for me, that was one of the first times that I saw the impact of storytelling and the importance of it in changing people's minds. And since I've kind of come to see that another great vehicle to do that is through public speaking. And throughout this talk, I'll be sharing, you know, a couple tidbits and, and tips and tricks regarding public speaking, because I know so many young women out there often feel that public speaking is a barrier to whatever the work they want to do in the world, whatever transformations they want to see in the world, whatever change they want to make. And so definitely stay tuned for some of those kind of public speaking tips and tricks. I was definitely once sitting in, you know, your own shoes and feeling like I couldn't get my voice out there because I was simply too scared to do so. Um, and then kind of once my activism journey began, I actually found that it was easier and easier to keep going just because, um, you know, I kept, I kept hearing from so many young women who felt that they were suddenly being seen. They felt that their story was suddenly getting out there and that this was the representation that they had for so long longed for. And it was almost weird because this you know, in turn was the representation and the connections that I had longed for. And so in helping them, I found that, you know, we had this reciprocal uh, relationship and I truly, truly love that. And so I think that was one of the moments in my life that was truly pivotal. And that's when I decided that this advocacy community mobilization uh, work was something that I was incredibly passionate about. And, and from there, you know, it's, it's kind of really been an incredible journey of meeting and talking to other young women who are doing the very best in the situations they have to create change on a grassroots level that's both local but also global in the sense that they realize that some of the oppression they face, that some of the challenges they face are not just unique to their communities, even if they are grounded in those communities, but are also part of this greater global struggle that we are all a part of and all must do more to care for each other and, and uplift each other and amplify the voices that are, you know, so often ignored or, or marginalized in our communities. And so that kind of brings me to last May, where as I was thinking about how to celebrate my 17th birthday, I realized that, you know, that this was a year like no other. <laughs> there was a pandemic. I couldn't see any of my friends. Like so many of you guys, I was like, can I really sit through another Zoom birthday party? Like, I don't think so. And so instead, you know, I, I learned of this figure that the Malala Fund published um, in late May and has recently, unfortunately, been upped that 20 million fewer girls would be returning to school because of the COVID-19 pandemic and the economic consequences of, you know, underrepresented and, and underprivileged communities around the world. And just that realization, and I'll kind of let that number sink in for a second, 30 million fewer girls. I mean, that's insane, right? Like, every single one of those girls, I think what's the saddest part is that they were in school. They had their foot in the door. They were able to go to school. And yet, just because of this pandemic that has affected all of us, now they'll never have that opportunity to read and write and, and discover, you know, all the, I think, incredible opportunities that come from getting an education. And so for my 17th birthday, I organized hashtag 17 for 17 advocating for girls education, which was a six hour long virtual event featuring incredible speakers like the CEO of the Malala Fund, the executive director of Michelle Obama's Girls Opportunity Alliance, as well as in my favorite part, countless young women who are creating change in their communities for girls education and bringing together this event that eventually, you know, there was 17 speakers from 17 plus countries, as well as 17,000 listeners into the event, and the event reached over 71,000 social media accounts. I think that was also another one of those like crazy moments in my life, because I never expected that this event would take off or reach anybody. Uh, but just by reaching out and telling people that I was truly passionate about this, and that more people needed to be talking about girls' education, everyone was so focused on what was happening in my life. Oh my God, we're not going to have a prom. Oh my gosh, we're not going to have a graduation. That we were suddenly forgetting about, you know, some of the, you know, incredible and 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 very unfortunate things that were happening to to girls in the in the larger struggle 
for gender parity around the world. And so organizing this event was, was you know, a really fun and I think inspirational experience for myself and hopefully for a lot of our attendees. And since I've very much been focused on thinking about, you know, how do we get young women, not only through 12 years of quality education, because that's just, that's just the first step, but how do we ensure that young women are present in the decision-making and peacemaking spaces that they not only need to be, but that, that they also deserve to be in. And so that all has brought me to today where I am founding an organization that I'd definitely love for you all to kind of reach out and maybe get involved in uh, that connects young women, young women change makers who are impact driven and looking to make a change in the world with speaking opportunities and the public speaking skills they need to thrive in those speaking opportunities. So whether that's panels or podcasts or organizations and companies, I know uh, when I got to speak at the United Nations this past September, it was such an incredible experience because I suddenly realized that the change that needed to be happening uh, from the very top to the very bottom, you know, of, of kind of the, the power structures that we give to, to different organizations and companies and society needed to happen and, and could only be driven by the presence of young women, and not only young women like me, but young women of all different religions, young women of all different races, young women of all different colors, young women of all different ethnicities, genders, so forth. And so making sure that you know, I love that this is kind of following up on an intersectionality talk because I think truly making sure that young women um, who embody, you know, every single community of young women who are out there today in our world is so incredibly important and, and is really, I'm hoping what will be my upcoming focus. And so definitely reach out if you'd like to get involved in that. Um, I think the kind of, you know, few things as I wrap up here that I'd love to say is that it's, super important that you remember that your voice matters. I think I spent so much time being afraid of getting my voice out there, not really knowing if some of the stories I would share would resonate with others. But most of all, you know, I think if you just keep talking and you just trust yourself enough to, to you know, reach out that first time or DM someone on Instagram, um, you never know what kind of might come back from the other side in, you know, last May when I was putting together this hashtag, for, hashtag 17 for 17 event, I reached out to Michelle Obama's Instagram because I was like, you know, why not? Like, she's probably never, ever going to see this. And I don't think she saw it, but <laughs> one of her team members got back to me and was like, you know, I'm so, so sorry. Unfortunately, Michelle Obama can't make it because she has a commencement, but we'd love to have the executive director speak. And I was like, I mean, <laughs> The fact that you're saying you'd love to have her, I'd love to have her, right? And so you never know what happens when you just reach out. And that's and that's definitely something that I wish I do and did more often. And I hope you all take that away from today's talk. I think also something that has been so transformative in my own life has been public speaking and the power of public speaking. And so as much as possible, making sure that you are very focused um, on your public speaking skills and are working as much as possible to practice, practice, practice. I think practice is a huge part of public speaking and being an effective public speaker. Um, but then on top of that, you know, making sure that your content, you know it well, you are confident in, in it, and that you are able to present your talk um, with a smile on your face. Because at the end of the day, when you're presenting, you can literally think of it as giving a present, right? Nobody, everyone could get your talk transcript and just read that. But that's not the point. Everyone wants to hear you tell that story and give that presentation and, and share your advice and expertise and insights. And as a Gen Zer, you have that unique digital expertise and lived experiences that so need to be heard. And so I think most of all, the advice I would give is to just trust in yourself and in your mission and in the communities you care about because they give you power and the stamina and energy and, and care, honestly, self-care to, to keep going and do this work. Um, so with that, I'll kind of hand it back over to our lovely organizers. Thank you again for having me and definitely reach out in the chat on Instagram if you have any questions or want to connect. Also, if you don't mind, if you want to keep your cameras on, we can do like a quick, quick selfie, quick pic together. And then uh, you can send me your, your Instagram handle 